now we'll turn to uh, Mr. Chetan Singh Solanki, Professor of the Indian Institute of Technology. Bye-bye. <coughs> professor, have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good evening to all of you. Good evening to all the delegates. Microphone. Thanks to uh, United Nations. So in this particular session, we are all discussing what are the barriers for development and deployment of renewable energy technologies. How do we accelerate the renewable energy solutions, and particularly what individuals, institutions, industries, and government can do in this context. Well, let me start uh, saying uh, that, uh, you know, uh, Mr. President, that the world is really suffering from energy and the wrong use of energy, the wrong way of using the energy, too much use of energy, the inefficient use of energy. So there are many problems that we are all suffering. And the solution also lies in the right energy and the right use of energy and providing access to energy, the clean energy and sustainable energy. So we need to figure out the solution, but while we figure out the solution, it is also important that uh, we develop a new solution which does not create an, another problem. We need to create a solution that is sustainable. We need to create a solution where we can make people energy independent and uh, uh, ensure that there is a sustainable living on this planet. So with this uh, note, uh, I'm going to present a solution which is about energy independence or what we say energy Swaraj. And I'm going to present this unique perspective because uh, I come from a small village in India, Bharat. I also studied in Europe. Uh, I've, I've been a professor in one of the best institutes in India. I have also been a researcher and uh, also a teacher of uh, spirituality. So that brings a very, very broad level perspective on what is the way forward and what is the right way forward to go towards energy independence or energy swaraj that every country and particularly developing countries uh, require in today's context. So in this context, I'm going to present you this uh, model. Well, um, energy is everything and everything is energy. We, in India, we say the whole world is play of energy. And rightly so, as United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, uh, the center of all this goal is energy. So whether it is poverty, hunger, education, literacy, climate change, even there will be a global peace or not will also be depending on the energy or the kind of energy that we use. Uh, so we have to play this game of energy very, very carefully. And that's what I said. Uh, uh, we need to go from the wrong energy and the wrong way of using energy to the right energy and the right way of using energy. But also we have to do it in a right time because we know that the climate change is becoming a very, very severe and very catastrophic. We keep hearing all kind of uh, events all over the world. And there is what is called climate clock that shows it is only a matter of five years and 300 odd days before we touch a global warming of 1.5 degrees centigrade. So rather than tweaking the solution, which I am afraid and I'm really worried that most of the people actually trying to tweak the solution, but I think we need to rethink and redesign the manner we generate our energy and the manner we consume energy so that we can make climate, we can solve the problem of climate change, we can provide uh, energy security to every institution, every country, and everybody should get energy access uh, without uh, too much of delay. Also, let me put this, uh, that I have taken a special mission. Uh, I started uh, what is called Energy Swaraj. Swaraj means self-rule, self-governance, so energy independence uh, yatra, a journey, for 11 years, and uh, I'm living in this bus that you see on the screen. Uh, this is my home, and I have pledged not to go home for 11 years. By the way, I'm married, and I have two daughters, but I believe that the world is really needing a solution and a very, very fast. So. Uh, this bus is a mobile bus with the solar panels and uh, all facilities inside. Well, uh, so we need to switch to solar energy or renewable energy solution, but in a very careful manner because modern humans, which means all of us, have tendency to, tendency to solve one problem and create another problem. So let us be very careful when we, when we make a transition from uh, one energy solution to other energy solution or the model of energy Swaraj. Well, we need to also look at the two fundamental, what I say, uh, call it boundary conditions, you know, of living on this planet. And I keep, uh, you know, as a professor, I keep making this remark that, you know, in a house we may, we created a rule that we are going to cook in kitchen, we'll sleep in the bedroom, and we take bath in the bathroom. Planet is also our bigger home, and it is important. 
conditions. And unfortunately, you look at the entire world, nobody knows what are the boundary conditions. Nobody has decided. So you can call them uh, uh, Solanke's uh, boundary conditions or law of sustainability. Law 1 says we need to limit our consumption for a simple reason that the size of our planet and all resources are limited. No amount of science and technological development will ever help us to surpass this limit. So make sure that every resource that we consume are actually limiting. And second thing is localizing the production. Because whenever you centralize the production, make bigger scale of production, it always results in unequal distribution. And unequal distribution will cause inequity in the world and that eventually will lead lack, lack of peace and eventually violence. So limiting consumption and localizing production are the two fundamental boundary conditions. And I'm repeating again uh, in this conference that no amount of science and technology can help us to overcome this. So no matter what we do, let us learn how to limit and how to localize uh, our consumption and production. With this, uh, I'm going to offer you this uh, model of energy Swaraj or energy independence or energy by locals for locals. How do we move towards renewed uh, solar energy or a lifestyle that is 100% powered with uh, solar energy? And the, the th three steps that I'm proposing is AMG, avoid, minimize, and generate. Step number one is avoid the use of energy as much as possible, even if it is solar energy. You know, I'm a professor of solar energy, and back in India, people call me solar man of India. But people get surprised when I say, please avoid use of solar energy also, because there is absolutely no technology in the world which does not have side effect. And when you look at the entire value chain of solar energy or hydrogen for that matter, I mean, you have to start from the mining of material to purification, crystal, and making silicon cells, then modules. For making module, you require glass and aluminum frame and iron structure and copper cable to extract the power and inverter to process the power. And at the end of uh, the life, you need to recycle. Again, you're going to use chemicals and materials. So uh, as we say in English, prevention is better than cure. And using solar energy or renewable energy or hydrogen energy is only cure. But thousand times better is not to use energy and not to misuse energy and not to overuse energy. And unfortunately, I'm sorry to say that all countries, even if it is developing countries or develop, developed countries, you know, we actually overuse and misuse energy to a great extent. This hall is a, in another example. I was requesting organizers if you can reduce the temperature of air conditioning, sorry, increase the temperature of air conditioning. They say, sorry, I mean, can't help because the, you know, the operator is not listening to us. So that's a waste of energy. And science and technology cannot help us to solve such a problem. So avoid use of energy is the best solution. I'm a professor of IIT Bombay, but at my home, we have avoided in many ways. We don't use refrigerator. We don't use geyser. We don't use air conditioner. I have stopped ironing my clothes. You know, it's not that I cannot afford. You know, I can. But let us all understand, ladies and gentlemen, that the nature cannot afford. Nature has limited capacity for everything. <clears throat> Let me go to step number two, is to minimize the use of energy if you cannot avoid. How do you can minimize? You can do it by, by using the energy efficiently. And today, all appliances that we use in our life, you know, whether it's lighting or fan or air conditioning or heating or tra traveling, there are very, very efficient appliances are available. And there's so much so that the efficient appliances can cut down on your energy needs by almost 30 to 40 percent. So let us go to efficiency first, you know, and people call energy efficiency the lowest hanging fruit. So before we think of generation and going to new technology, let us use devices which are very energy efficient so that you can cut down on your energy needs by another one third. So let us learn how to avoid energy by one third. Let us minimize by another one third so that your remaining energy needs are only one third. And what you need to do is only generate one third. And when you need to generate one third, you don't have to really cry for policies and you don't have to really cry for a lot of money. You don't have to really cry for grid connection and you can really be very, very powerful. So generation has to be the last step in the entire value chain. And as I said, energy is everything and everything is energy. If you can cut down in your energy needs significant and bring it down to one third, believe me, every individual, every institution, every country can really be the independent in terms of energy and that will give the power. You know, right now, 
uh, 85% energy comes from coal, oil, and gas, and that is very centralized. So we are all dependent, and that's why even Europe has gone through the trouble uh, because of the Russia. So energy independence or energy swaraj is one of the most powerful tool, I would say, uh, in the hands of people today if we can adopt. I hope every delegate and every country remembers this law that I'm offering, AMG, avoid, minimize, and generate one-third, one-third, one-third. And if you're not going to follow this model of AMG, you'll have to say, OMG, oh my God, solutions are expensive. Oh my God, policies does not exist. Oh my God, you know, this and oh my God, all kind of options, problem will come. And I believe that is actually the truth. So let us all follow AMG and move towards energy independence. Well, I'm not saying this just uh, because I'm a professor and I can theorize things, but I'm telling it because we have, you know, implemented this as a solution and, uh, and adopted it. So how do I reach out to the billion people and offer them energy access or energy independence? Uh, well, if you can look carefully, in particular to the developing countries, there are three problems of availability, affordability, and repairability of these uh, solutions and products. And one of the key solutions is localize everything, you know, make it local. You know? and, and let me tell you that the solar energy solutions are not the rocket science. You know? Everybody actually can learn and do it. And, and I keep asking how many of us are using solar energy, and very few people raise their hand. But let us realize that the food that we eat, the air that we breathe, and the water that we drink is a representation of energy. So by the way that you're eating food and drinking water and you know, breathing air, you're already using solar energy. So let us realize that we are a big user of solar energy and running our lights and fans and cooking devices should not be a big deal, provided we locally generate and consume our own energy solution. Does it really work and can it really work? Well, we have shown it in many, many ways. Uh, for example, we have uh, implemented a project where we reached out to 7.5 million families uh, across 40,000 villages in India. What we did is we, we, we localized the solution in a manner that we can empower local women to assemble their own solar product, repair their own solar product. So what we have done, we have, for example, created a technological solution which are in open source. And as Professor Avalon mentioned, uh, that more and more data and more and more work is available as a, as a public domain. So can we not create a solutions for the lighting and cooking and fan, which is an open source? Everybody can do that. We have done it for uh, small solar devices. We have also done a capacity building at the local level. So rather than bringing people, we have provided the training at their doorstep and created all kind of manuals in their own language. We have created a local institutions and local enterprising uh, so that uh, uh, so that the local skill development can happen, local job creation can happen, and local economy can become strengthened. And also we have created a last mile supply chain and creating a mobile-based uh, uh, services and uh, data so that everybody get access to. So the entire kind of ecosystem was localized, and believe me, it has created thousands of stories and very success stories uh, how women, when they get money, how powerful they become and how open they become. And uh, it is important that not only we become local, but involve women also in this uh, and so that we can retain the solution and make local economies stronger, make local institutions stronger, and in that way, make countries stronger. So all these technological solutions, as I said, in open domain, and, uh, and as I said, they are not rocket science. You can actually standardize the product uh, so that we can meet our daily needs. And these are some examples uh, how we have created uh, this, and there is a it's available in public domain for everyone. Uh, we have trained about 9,000 plus women uh, in making their own solar devices, uh, resulting in uh, we providing solar solutions to about 7.5 million families. The, this particular product was intended for the solar lighting, uh, but it has actually resulted in, in livelihood generation. It has resulted in many other uh, solutions. Women also earn money out of this. And then we have created a local institutions uh, for creating small uh, industries locally, creating local shops, uh, so that uh, they become the owner and supplier of everything themselves. And uh, solar solutions, as I said, very, very simple, and we can do it very easily. Well, uh, and uh, in the local supply chain, it's very easy to do that with the advancement of internet and the IT solutions. Uh, we can provide that so, so we can trace where which product is going and where it is going in all. Uh, we have provided this solution to 10 states, uh, which includes uh, 
uh, uh, 10 states in Bharat, which includes uh, Rajasthan, uh, uh, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Assam, Odisha. Uh, so quite big geography that we have covered, 40,000 villages. Uh, we have trained uh, 9,000 women and local shops and local repair centers and thousands we have created. So this was a great uh, success story. We have presented this model of energy swaraj and energy independence to IEEE competition, which is a global competition with more than 459 teams have taken part all over the world, uh, and we have beaten all those teams, and we were the winner, a global winner with the $100,000 as a prize money. Uh, at the end, I would uh, like to summarize this uh, uh, from, uh, I have presented a very broad perspective about where the problem is and how uh, even the developed countries and developing countries are going wrong in terms of renewable energy technologies. So my summary is following. That it's wrong energy and the wrong way of using energy, the carbon-based energy that is resulting in a global warming and ever-accelerating climate change, uh, which we are all going to suffer. And it's only a matter of time that suffering goes to everyone. It is the right energy in the form of uh, solar energy, which is the center of our existence. We all exist because of solar energy. We have to come back to the center for existence. And to come to the right energy, we need to follow the right model also. And that right model comes from uh, the fact of energy swaraj or energy independence. Uh, uh, and we can all become energy independent without really depending too much on other countries and other policies and even the money. If we can follow the AMG model, avoid, minimize, and generate model. Let us first avoid use of energy, then minimize, and eventually focus only smaller portion for the generation. And when we are all adopt to energy swaraj or energy independence, we not only end up creating jobs, which is the problem in many countries, but also skill development. We also strengthen the local economy, and we also move towards energy independence. And above all, we will be able to solve the problem of climate change. We will be able to mitigate the climate change. And we all together, with this localized energy independence model, can make this world a better and beautiful place not only for ourselves, for our future generation also. So with this note, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Thanks to United Nations once again for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much.